Hello and welcome to class number 34 of our 40 day challenge. I can hardly believe we're already on 34. Today we'll be doing a vinyasa style again because it's the best and we'll be focusing on like some heart opening. I don't even want to tell you what it is because sometimes we have preconceived ideas of like, I don't like heart opening poses or I do like them or, and this class contains like some easy stuff, some hard stuff. But the cool thing is, is that it flows really nicely. So I don't even tell you what's happening. Like black out all the windows of the bus. We're just going to go on a vinyasa journey and it's going to be amazing. If you want to have a few blankets, you might want those or a couple blocks is nice if you like. When you're ready, let's get settled into your centering posture. So perhaps that's Balasana Child's Pose, or if that's just not comfortable, cross-legged seated even, lying down, whatever works for you, get comfortable for a few moments before our practice to really get tuned in and centered. So take those moments to settle in Starting to feel present in this moment. One of the best ways to do that is to feel your body in space. Feel the temperature of the air on your skin. Feel the pressure of the floor beneath you. Noticing where your body makes contact with the earth. <clears throat> Another thing that's kind of fun to do in centering is notice your emotional state. This is interesting. Notice it without reacting. Notice, do you feel excited because it's vinyasa time? Or maybe you had a bit of a day and you feel anxious. Maybe you feel tired. Maybe you feel really energetic. Try to assess without judgment. There's reasons we do this, which I'm not going to get into, but it, it's, it's needless to say, it's very interesting to be able to, like an observer, notice where we're at and just santosha contentment, just we are where we are. And then we'll see where we wind up. Next, let's set an intention for our practice. Maybe it has to do with our emotional state. I want to do yoga so I feel more calm. Or maybe it's to do with strength. Or maybe it's inner peace. Whatever benefits you love about yoga, just picking one of them. Taking three slow, deep breaths through the nose. See if you can take an extra sip of air at the top, feeling a gentle stretch in the lungs and squeezing out that last puff of air at the bottom of every exhale. And then slowly start to make your way all the way up and back to our first downward facing dog. Take your time, take your time. 
maybe walking it out that first one. And then send the feet forward all the way to the top of your mat, landing in a forward fold. Feet are parallel. Decompressing the spine, so feel the neck relax. Slowly, one vertebra at a time, ragdoll, all the way up to standing. And come on up to the top of your mat, heels and toes together into Dasana Mountain Pose, nice and wide across the collarbones. Here we go. Inhale, raise the arms way up high, getting taller. On the exhale, Forward fold, nice and smooth, like you're gliding through molasses. Inhale for flat back and exhale, down, heading back to plank, strong plank, scooping the belly in and lowering chaturanga. Inhale for cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. For one. Two. Three. Four, and five. Send the feet forward, inhaling for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. And again, getting nice and Warm as we inhale, arms go up. Exhale, gliding forward, nice and smooth. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, down, heading back to plank. Strong plank, scooping the belly in and lowering chaturanga. Inhale, up. And exhale. Downward facing dog. For one. Two. Three. Four, and five. Send those feet forward, inhaling for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. Just one more. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, gliding forward. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale down, back through plank. And lower, chaturanga. Inhale, up. And exhale, downward facing dog. For one. Two. 
two, three, four, Five. Send the feet forward. Inhaling for a flat bow. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. Here we go. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for a flat back. Exhale down back through plank. And lowering chaturanga. Inhale up. And exhale. Downward facing dog. From here, start to walk the feet forward, almost all the way up to the hands. Heels together and bend the knees a lot into a nice squat. This next little exercise, I don't think that we've done it at all in this challenge. Y'all might know what I'm talking about if you've taken my classes before. This one's called frog. Actually, there's a few called frog. There's a lot of like amphibians in yoga and this is one of them. I'm gonna start our timer now. Fingertips on the floor, heels are up, knees are turned out. Inhale as you straighten through the legs. Maybe they straighten all the way, maybe they don't. Exhale, we bend. Keep going. Inhale, we straighten. Exhale, we bend. And that's it, it's just, this is so fun because it's repetitive. So we keep going. Remember to keep the heels up as much as you can. Knees are out. We inhale as we bend. I mean, as we straighten, exhale as we bend. Inhale, straighten, exhale, bend. Go at your own pace and keep going. So because I fudged that up a little bit, we inhale as we straighten, exhale, bend. Keep going. Now, as for pace, luckily there is no set pace. You can go super slow, or you can like try to mimic a hummingbird if you want to. That's your choice. Sometimes in this one, we don't feel like we have much of a choice. We're just going at the pace of survival and that's okay too. I like to call this one getting ready for ski season. I'm not a skier, but, uh, but I'll be ready. <laughs> Keep going. See how nifty this is? It just keeps going. And it's just it's more and more fun with each repetition. Sadly, we're almost done. So keep going those last few. Now for sure, it's almost done, for sure, for sure, for sure. I was just kidding before. Okay, now, and in a squat, take a second. Isn't that awesome? Okay, from here, step it back to your downward facing dog or to child's pose. Few deep breaths here, maybe walking it out. and send the feet forward. Inhaling for flat back, exhale forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller, don't the legs feel amazing? And exhale to a tall mountain. Again, inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, back through plank. And lowering chaturanga. Inhale up. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, we lower through hands and knees. And all the way to seated. So this is nice. I get to sit down. Arms up to the sides. And all we do, this is it. Arms go down, arms go up. Like one inch. That's it. That's all. This is kind of similar to our T's and our Y's, but it's just out to the sides. That's it. Keep going. <sighs> Gives you a chance to catch your breath if it ran away from you during the last one. For this one, we want to be sure that the shoulders are down though. Otherwise we're strengthening parts of the body we don't want to get stronger. Long arms, energy right through the fingertips. Keep going. Nice slow breathing through the nose. You can even close the eyes for this one. It's sometimes really nice. And what I like to do, maybe it's hooey, but I like to just like anything that involves something that looks like flying, picture where are you flying to? And it can be like a physical spot, like I really miss the Caribbean or something like that, or it can be a goal. I am flying to my goal right now. And not only visualizing you flying to your goal, but actually visualize yourself arriving and then take part of the exercise to visualize and imagine what would your goal feel like or what will your goal feel like when you achieve it? You know, like if it's flexibility you're looking for, you're like, I really want to get my splits. What will that feel like to like be in the splits? Just visualize one leg over here, one's way over there, and it feels great. You know, it feels super comfortable. Just taking a moment to actually visualize and feel the success. We're in the home stretch. Keep going. Last 10 seconds or so. And then before we finish, this is the best bit. Reach, 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 reach. And then relax. Isn't that last little bit, that end bit? There's no words for how to describe that. I'm going to go with, feels great. Let's go with that. It's interesting though, you're actually moving and that feels like one thing and then you hold and it's a whole nother box of frogs. Okay, so from here, let's head into a downward facing dog or a child's pose. So your shoulders might prefer a child's pose after that. Give your shoulders what they need. Couple deep breaths. And send the feet forward, inhaling for flat back, exhale forward fold, inhale all the way up, we're reaching up high, getting taller, and exhale to a tall mountain. And again, inhale, arms go up, exhale forward fold, inhale for flat back, exhale down, heading back through plank, and lowering chaturanga. Inhale up and exhale, downward facing dog. 
From here, let's all together lower into a nice child's pose. Take a moment, softening back. We'll take just a few moments here to soften the arms and shoulders. Couple deep breaths. From here, come on up to your hands and knees. I just realized I don't have the space to do the next one. So I'm going to really quick as I can MacGyver a little setup. Here, we're on hands and knees, and we're on hands and knees, and extend the right leg. This is so, this is worth it. And you might be like, what is she doing? This is worth it, I promise you. Okay, so from here, we, to uh, wait for it. <laughs> okay, so we extend the right leg back. And then, like it doesn't have to be super high, belly scoops in, but here's the best bit. Reach the leg to the side, and then all the way forward. Like you're trying to just lightly tap your right shoulder. And then slowly, slowly bring it back. And then just keep doing that. So again, slowly, slowly, the leg moves to the side, like you're trying to reach all the way to your arm. And then slowly, slowly, bring it back. And we keep going. Isn't this amazing? This is, you're going to love this. If you're like, I don't like this right now, just wait. Just wait for it. Keep going. So this is number three. We've got a timer. And then you can go at your own pace as long as it's nice and slow. I'm doing my fourth one here. And then slowly, slowly, we're in the home stretch. Whenever we're on, we're on four, so now we're on five. Slowly, slowly. And then we bring it back you might feel the glutes now and then number six and slowly slowly let's just do one more timer says one more seven and back and release grab a child's pose isn't that amazing that is something else, that one. Couple deep breaths. Okay. And then now I can go back to my regular setup here for the second side. Okay. Here we go. Left leg extends back. And here we go. Moves to the side nice and slow, 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 slow. Like you're trying to tap your left shoulder and then the belly scoops in as you send that leg back. Number two, we'll do seven on this side as well. I'm trying to go just as slow as the first side because it's so much fun. And then slowly, slowly we head back. Number three, like you're moving through molasses. It feels like more like bedrock, but that's okay. And then slowly, slowly. Number four. And then slowly, slowly, slower than you want to. No, this is temporary, especially this last little hurrah on the second side. Find that inner strength. So dig deep. It's there. Find it, find it, find it. And back. We're almost done. And again, slowly, slowly. And 
and back. In the home stretch now, for sure, for sure. Slowly, slowly. And back. I bet there's only one left. I lost count, but timer says one left. Slowly, slowly. And back reaching and child's pose. Ooh, that's like one of my favorites ever. Feel the glutes softening and relaxing. From here, popping up and back to downward facing dog, walking it out. And then send the feet forward, inhaling for flat back, exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. Again, inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, back through plank. And lowering, chaturanga. Inhale up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Couple deep breaths. From here, taking a baby warrior one, so right foot steps a little bit forward, back heel spins down, coming up, little tiny baby warrior one. Then release the arms. You might want to block, and what we'll do is place it on the inside of your front foot. You don't have to, but if you want to, that's where it would go. Hands to the hips, inhale to lengthen. Draw the right hip back. So notice how my hips completely squared up. We're inhaling to lengthen. We exhale, forward fold. You place your hands on your shin. Eventually, maybe they'll reach the floor. Just a few deep breaths here, really feeling that length in the back of that front leg. Breathing deep for two. Three. Four, five, belly scoops in, long straight spine, come on all the way up, returning to our baby warrior one, down through lunge, either step right back to child's pose, downward dog, or for extra challenge, back through plank, lowering chaturanga, inhale up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Other side, little baby step forward with that left foot. Back heel spins down. Little baby warrior one. Release the hands to the waist. Left hip draws back, back, back. Inhale, lifting through the heart. And exhale, block would be on the inside of that front foot or reaching the shin or maybe the floor, either way, slow, deep breathing. So this is a variation of Parjvottanasana, but it's more about the stretch. Breathing deep. That's two. Three, four, 
and thigh. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, hands to the hips. On your next inhale, come on all the way up. Returning to baby warrior one. Down through lunge. Back to child's pose, downward dog or plank. If you're carrying on in your vinyasa, we lower chaturanga. Inhale, up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Breathing deep. And we send the feet forward, inhaling for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. Preparing for Uttita Hasta Padangushtasana, hand to big toe pose. So for this one, transfer all the weight onto the left foot, picking up the right. This is what all those poses that I don't really like very much. I just try not to think about it, just get her done with integrity. So trying to summon that inner strength, lift up that right leg, either hold it with the right hand or peace fingers to the big toe and belly scoops in. Did you see that? I almost, I almost held on to that one. Here we go. Holding on your balance. No matter what happens, you hold it, you lose it, doesn't matter. That's two, three, four, and five. Release. <laughs> You're like, Carly, you count a lot faster in that pose. You're probably right. Other side. So go, go, gadget, left leg. Left knee goes up, not thinking about it, summoning the inner strength, peace fingers, or hand to the knee, and extending the leg forward for a one, two, three, four, and five. Release. That wasn't so bad. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, heading back through plank. And lowering chaturanga. Inhale up. And exhale, downward facing dog. From here, preparing for a, like a high, low lunge. <laughs> the problem when there's several names for the same pose. So this is high flying dragons in yin or anjaniyasana in hatha yoga. Right foot steps forward, back knee lowers down to your mat or something cushy. So from here, this is where we get to do like nice, easy pose. It's like a, an easy type of yin style. So we get set up. I like blocks for this one. We get to hang on here for two minutes and it's so lovely in the middle of a vinyasa, but it's important. So we still have some strength stuff left to do, but right now what we're doing is preparing for a back bend. So we'll, after we stretch out the leg here or the hip flexor, we'll be heading into a back bend. And I just love anatomy. It's really important to lengthen the hip flexors, particularly the iliopsoas muscle. It's my favorite muscle. Everyone's got a favorite color. Why don't I have a favorite muscle? And this one is mine because it really assists our back bending and it's underutilized. If we don't have a flexible hip flexor, like you can see, my back is arching here. That's because you're not supposed to, in a yin pose, really pull the belly in and tuck the tailbone under like that, like we would for anjaniyasana. It's okay to let the back arch a bit, so long as we're feeling the stretch here. But what happens is, if we don't have a very flexible iliopsoas muscle, then the back, in back bending, has to bend more. So we want a lot of the back bend to come from the hip flexor, believe it or not. I'll sort of, I'll show you when we get to our back bend. 
what I mean by that. If you have an anatomy background, you might be like, yeah, I understand what you mean. Um, but sometimes it's nice to actually see the visual. And if you don't have an anatomy background and you learn this today, you might be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I was when I learned that. I was like, that makes so much more sense. And it made my back bending much, much easier. Slowly, slowly, we'll just switch it up. So the right knee then goes back on your squishy thing or mat. Maybe your mat is your squishy thing. And then left foot nice and slow, slow, slow. Even if you're flexible, the body likes to go nice and slow. Flipping that timer. Just watching our clock. I want to keep this under an hour. If it was up to me, I'd have yoga classes that were like four hours long because yoga is just, yoga is so good. Especially after that snack I had. I mean, so this is like part yoga class, part Carla's confession. I made up this snack. I'm not usually allowed in the kitchen, <laughs> but uh, there's this, it, it, I think it sounds really yummy. So you take some peanut butter, put it in a bowl, and a little bit of honey. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of it, like not quite half and half, but like more than is appropriate. A and then on top of that, you add like a scoop of cocoa powder. And then you just stir it up and you eat it. And <laughs> that's, I, is that a thing? Let me know um, in the comments. That would be great. If, if that's a thing, I think it's a thing, but what happened was, um, my daughter who's nine at the time last year, she <laughs> stumbled upon me and was like, that's not a thing mom. Cause it's one of those things. It seems like people think if you can like make a little tray of it, a little plate and then take it to the table, that's a snack. But when you're just sort of hovering over the peanut butter jar and just sort of scooping, and mixing in a, like, you don't even leave the counter. Apparently that's frowned upon. But I recommend it, it's worth it. <sighs> Sinking and melting into it, especially if this is your tighter side. For me, right leg back is, it's just tighter. So really focusing on that stretch. That was where all the peanut butter's hiding. Right hip flexor is stuck there. Couple deep breaths. And then slowly, slowly release. Let's quickly do gecko. So five deep breaths. We'll repeat right foot steps forward. Pop those left toes off the floor, or if gecko's not available, pick your quad stretch for a one. Two. Three, four, slowly release after five. And other side. So now left foot steps forward, back knee lowers down, pop those back toes off the floor, find those toes for a one. Two, three, four, five. Slowly release. And then heading into like hands and knees or whatever, we're going to make our way onto our belly and prepare for Sphinx or seal pose, two minutes. Okay, so propping up onto the forearms. And if that's enough of a stretch for the back, stay there. If you're looking for more of a stretch, come on up to seal pose. The weirdest thing just happened for me and Gecko. We've talked about this before, I think, in this challenge. Sometimes we, or maybe it's in another video, I don't know, but sometimes we hold memory in our body, like, we obviously have memory in our brain, but in the spinal column, 
Uh, and memories are held at a cellular level. So sometimes yoga can bring up memories. And when I used to gecko, I don't know why, but I had this flashback to, I used to work in the film industry in Vancouver. And there's, so if anyone is watching who used to work with me, what is that restaurant? There's like a restaurant that we used to order lunch from near North Shore Studios or Lionsgate Studios or whatever they call it nowadays in North Vancouver. But the, I think it's right, it's been like 20 years since I've been there, so I don't remember. But there's this little restaurant in a little strip mall that's like right behind the film studios. And they had, I think, Cobb salad was what I usually got from there. 20 points for the name of that restaurant. Hmm. Really bizarre. I just had like a flashback of being there. Strange. Couple more deep breaths here. And slowly, slowly release from here either rest in this pose here or if you feel up to it heading all the way up and back in a child's pose releasing the back couple deep breaths so take your time take your time And then nice and slow, come on up to a kneeling position, preparing for Ustrasana camel pose. This is where I can show you what I mean about the hip flexor. So go kind of sideways where you can see my posture. So there's a natural tendency to want to sway the back a little bit in this. I'm exaggerating for demonstrative purposes. Let me just get rid of my arms. Um, so we want to kind of try to scoop the tailbone under, but so this is the hip flexors here. So when uh, when the knees are like hip distance apart, there's a tendency to want to sway the back. This is because for me, my hip flexors are not long enough. And that's what's so interesting too. I'm actually quite flexible in the hip flexors, but it's all relative. My back is more bendy than my hip flexors. So that's why my back's like, I'll do it. It's fine. And this is what happens. So no matter how inflexible you think you might be, there's going to be some sort of relativity between your hip flexor and your back. So you see how um, if my back is arching like this, that means this muscle um, is short, right? If it was longer, then there would be more space and my back wouldn't have to bend so much, right? So for Ustrasana camel pose, remember you can tuck the toes under if you're looking for it a little bit easier. And if you don't want to go into it at all, just sort of stay here. Okay. So from here, let's go ahead and head into it to the best of your ability today, right? Don't go further. Don't run before you walk. So lifting up nice and tall, keep the hips forward, 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 up and back, heading into camel pose. I'm breathing deep. Thinking about lengthening the hip flexors of all things. We're not here too, too long. Just enough to feel a nice stretch. And slowly, slowly, come on all the way out and back to child's pose. And either stay in child's pose for a few more moments or head into downward dog or for extra challenge, heading back to your plank, lowering chaturanga. Inhale up, which feels so much easier off your camel. And exhale, downward facing dog. From here, lowering all the way to seated, Dandasana staff pose, feet are forward. Preparing for, it's been a while since we've done this, Navasana Boat Pose. That's all I'm saying right now. <laughs> so, arms are parallel to the floor, 
remember options. All your options don't go further than you feel like is acceptable for your body today. Focusing on belly scoops in. We don't want to use our muscles pushing them out. Pull them in, lift the heart up. Ready? And go. For a one, two, three, four, five. Release, hands to the floor, lift the hips up for a one, two, three, four, five. Again, bow pose, one, two, three, four, five. Talasana or Utkutihi <laughs> for one, two, three, four, five. Last time. Boat pose, Navasana for a one, two, three, four, five. Last time. Utkutihi for one, two, Belly scoops in for three, four, and five. Release. So either just wait for a second or for extra challenge heading back through plank, lowering chaturanga. Inhale, nice stretch for the tummy. And exhale, downward facing dog. <sighs> From here, we'll all meet together back in seated, and we'll prepare for shoelaces, or yin posture. So for this one, probably up on a block, so that we can get both legs in. Right leg crosses over top, left leg scooches in beneath. I like to do a little bit of a readjustment, scooch those knees in, and <sighs> this is a great stretch for after our like back, side, but that whole thing, all that jazz. That restaurant might not even be there anymore. Not a lot of restaurants last 20 years, do they? Hmm. So extra 10 points if you know the name of what used to be there. <laughs> oh dear. <sighs> That's a good idea. Maybe, maybe it's a bad idea. Yin yoga and trivia. What do you think? I have some board games, but do I have Trivial Pursuit or something that's fun like that? Trivial questions, trivia questions during yin. Let me know. Is it a good idea or is that dumb? It is more yoga to like go within and we do want to do that too. But sometimes you're like, I just want to stretch and chat. I think it's a good idea. Or like riddles or something. I like riddles. And release. Oh, I have so many activities planned for today. Let's get through them. Not very much time between sides, okay? Other side. 
Hold up those legs. Get them in there. Don't move faster than is safe for you, but efficiently. I'm like a, like a ninja. Yoga ninja. <sighs> okay, I'm really liking this trivia idea. If you have, and especially riddles, if you have riddles, can you email me them? VernonYoga at gmail.com. And then I'll do a video of like riddles. I like riddles. I think it's a good idea. Last few deep breaths here. See if you can soften a little bit more. And slowly, slowly release. Either hang out for a moment in Dandasana or for extra challenge, last vinyasa, heading back through plank, lowering chaturanga. Inhale up and exhale, downward facing dog. And lowering all the way down and heading all the way back, preparing for twisted roots. When you're there, bending those knees, right leg crosses all the way over left, setting those knees over to the left as the hips move over to the right. Softening into it. Remember to keep that right shoulder on the ground. Belly scoops in, pressing the low back into the floor, unravel, unwind. And other side, left crossing all the way over right. Hips shift to the left as the knees go to the right. Scoop the belly in, pressing the low back into the floor. Once you're all unraveled, hug both knees into your chest, giving those knees a little squeeze, a little rock back and forth, side to side. Extra little squeeze to release that twist of the spine and Shavasana, relaxing through the legs. Either keep those knees bent with the feet on the floor. If your back needs a little extra support today, otherwise, extending the legs, arms along your sides, palms facing up, and then closing the eyes. 
softening everything, everything. But especially through the neck and the shoulders and all the way down the arms. Letting the fingers softly curl. Softening through the face. Softening around the eyes. And even the muscle between the eyes. Just letting it all go. Starting to come back. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And gently roll your head from side to side. And reach your arms above head on the floor, giving yourself a big stretch, feeling totally refreshed. And bend your knees one at a time and gently roll over to the right side, pausing there just for a moment as you come back. And then slowly start to press yourself all the way up to a comfortable seated position. And when you arrive, palms facing up on the knees, inhale, sitting up tall, and exhale softly, close the eyes. Taking those final moments to thank yourself for showing up to your practice today. Taking another few moments to really appreciate what your body does for you. We spend so much time thinking it's not good enough. And so taking the opportunity to acknowledge how much our bodies do for us. And slowly, Open the eyes. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you next time. Namaste.